We've looked at how to find the derivative function algebraically, where you're given a formula for f of x, and you're asked to find a formula for the derivative, f prime of x. And typically you do that with the formula f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We could also ask, uh, how do you find the derivative graphically? So given a graph of f of x, how would you find a graph of the derivative function, f prime of x? And we did that by thinking of the derivative as the slope of the tangent line uh, to the graph of f of x at any given point, and using that to come up with a graph for the derivative. Now I want to look at the uh, question of finding the derivative numerically. So what that means is, given a table of values for f of x, find a table of values for f prime of x. So let's consider the following table of values for f of x. So here we have a column for x and a column for f of x. And here's a plot of these points, and we can see that they kind of go up and then back down again. In fact, if I assume that I have a nice smooth curve for f of x, I can actually draw in a curve, something like this. And when we look at this, we see that it looks like we have a positive uh, derivative here, a, a uh, slope of a tangent line with a positive slope here, so we'd expect a positive number for the derivative. And then up here, it looks like we have something that's getting to be pretty small, close to zero and then something that becomes negative, and then levels out a little bit here, but then becomes negative again. So that's what we would expect for the derivative. How would we actually find that those values? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this definition for the derivative, except instead of allowing the limit as h approaches zero as an approximation, we're just gonna look at the fraction part, which we call the difference quotient. And we're going to think of h as being our delta x here, change in x. And so if we look at the column of x here, it's going up by 2 each time, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So in this case, we're going to think of delta x as being 2. So of course, if it went up by 3 each time, delta x would be 3. And if it went up by a different amount each time, then our delta x would change each time we did a computation. So let's look at some examples. Let's find the derivative at zero, and we're gonna use our approximation here. So in this case, x is playing uh, the role of zero, or I should say zero is playing the role of x, and two, of course, was our delta x. And so now I can just read this right off the table. f of zero plus two is the same thing as f of two, and f of two is 11, and f of zero is three. So I get 11 minus three over two, which is eight over two, which is four. How about f prime at 2? So again, I'll use the formula, and I have f of 2 plus 2. Well, it's the same thing as f of 4 minus f of 2, which is 17 minus 11 over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. And I'll look at one more. How about f prime of 4? That's f of 4 plus 2, which is f of 6. So we have f of 6 minus f of 4. In other words, 14 minus 17 over 2, which is negative 3 over 2, which is negative 1.5. Okay, so here's a table of values for f and f prime, and I'm calculating f prime just as I, I showed you in the previous slide. And you'll notice that there isn't a value for uh, f prime of 12, and that's because uh, we would need to know the next point over if we were going to do that subtraction. And so we end up getting uh, a table of values for f prime, and let's see if they make sense with what we expect from the graph of f. So this is our graph of f, and we expected that uh, we started out with a pretty large positive slope, and we have that here. And then up near here, we expected something pretty small. And well, I got negative 1.5, not super small. And then over here, we have negative 0.5. It kind of looks right. Negative 1, hmm. And negative 1.5. Okay, so it kind of looks right, but how could we get a better approximation? So here's our uh, table of values again. And notice for f prime of x, I put a little subscript L, and that's because we are using the left endpoints. So what do I mean by that? Well, remember how we didn't have a value down here for f prime of 12? Well, that's because we were looking at endpoints from the left. In other words, uh, to calculate 
the value of f prime at zero, I took this point and I took this point. And I used those two values in order to calculate the slope. The problem is, if I use this left endpoint here, I don't have another point to use over here in order to calculate the slope, and so I have a missing value here. But if I looked at things from the left, couldn't I also do the same thing from the right? In other words, I can calculate using right endpoints now, so that, for instance, uh, I use these two points right here at 12 and at 10 to get the value at 12, and so now I do have a value here, and I don't have one up here. That's the one that's missing. Okay, well that's great. I have a left, I have a right. Now how do I get a better approximation? How about if I take the average of these two? And I'll call that my f prime of x. Now of course at the endpoints I don't have anything to take an average of, so those just stay the same, but at the ones in the middle I do have an average. And now let's see if that's a better approximation. So at f prime of 2, I have 3.5 now. So that's right here. That looks about right for the slope. And then right here, I have 0 0.75 for f of 4. And that looks even better. I had negative 1.5 and I had 3 from the other direction. Those definitely don't look right. But 0 0.75 definitely looks uh, like a better approximation here, getting closer to 0. And then I have negative 1, that looks good. And I have negative 7.75, that looks good. And then negative 1.25. So you can see that by taking left endpoints and right endpoints and taking the average of those, that you get the best approximation uh, for the derivative numerically.